Hidden away in the keyboard section of the sound browser, GarageBand for iPhone Sampler is a surprisingly powerful way to capture, edit and playback pretty much any sound you can think of. Let's check it out. GarageBand for iPhone Sampler looks really similar to a lot of its other keyboard-based touch instruments. You have a playable keyboard here, and can access more controls by tapping the dial icon in the top right of the screen. Let's jump right in and sample something then. If I hit the big red button, the sampler will begin recording and will continue to do so until I hit stop. I'm left with this waveform. Again, I can access this by tapping the dial icon. The waveform plays back when I press any key on the sampler's keyboard. Now, I only want one of these haze, I guess. I don't want all of them to play back when I press on a key. So I can edit which part of the sample is played by dragging and dropping the arrows in the bottom corner. Hey, 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 hey. Now, only the part of the waveform in between the two arrows will play back when I touch a key. That's pitched maybe a little bit too high, so I can bring the sample down an octave by hitting details here and turning the coarse tuning dial down to minus 12. If I want to then record my sample into my project, all I have to do is hit record at the top of the screen and just play away. The sample is recorded as MIDI, so if there are any timing mistakes or hiccups while playing back the sample, I can tap on the region, tap settings, then use quantization to fix it. Now I can add in more sounds using another collection of highly specialised musical equipment. I want to use this knife sound for a pie hat like thing, so I'll isolate the hit that I want to use. Then pitch it up an octave or two using the coarse tune knob again. Sounds good and it's ready to record. Hey. The toy sound is good for an effect, but if I hit the reverse button, I think it sounds even cooler. The clap sounds pretty good, though I do need to adjust the velocity so it hits a bit harder without me having to pound my iPhone screen when recording. I only want to keep a single note of the handheld sample so that it's playable on the keyboard. Oh, oh, oh. 
It's worth noting that you can use the detect pitch option if things don't sound quite right to help keep everything in tune. And the animal sound I want to use as a bass actually, so I'll chop it down to just a small part of the sampled sound. Then in the details menu, tune it down by, let's say, two octaves, which gives me this. Put all of that together and... Well, you get the idea. If you'd rather work with pre-existing sounds, in GarageBand for iPhone specifically, you'll need to tap the little triangle menu here to open up your sample library. From here, you can access any previously created samples and use some of Apple's pre-recorded sounds or you can import other audio clips. You can add loops from GarageBand's loop library. Compatible audio files from your files app. and tracks from the music app, though bear in mind that copyright protected songs and songs not stored locally on your device can be imported. And you can use all of the editing features I covered earlier to chop up and mangle pre-existing loops and sounds however you please, though it's worth mentioning that you can't retain the tempo of longer samples when playing them at different pitches. Let me know if you plan to use GarageBand Sampler in your projects down in the comments. And if you found this video helpful, give that like button a good hard slap on the way past. I really appreciate it. If you're just getting started with GarageBand for iOS and want to hit the ground running, watch this next. <laughs>